The Small Business Show, episode 388 for Wednesday, July 13th, 2022. <music> Greetings, folks, and welcome to or welcome back to the, the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show where we are using our business brains and small business thing every single week. Sponsors for this episode include Shopify. We're at shopify.com slash SBS. You can get a 14-day trial and full access to Shopify's entire suite of features and rate tracker presented by SkySale Solutions, your trusted payments processor, Rate Tracker is this credit card processing rate watchdog. I can't wait to tell you more about it, and I will do so about them and uh, Shopify a little bit later here in the episode. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. In Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. Those are two awesome sponsors. I love it. When Yeah, no, yeah. We've, we've been... I mean, I guess it, it it's a sign that we're doing something right, that, that we've got sponsors that we either use or would use. Uh, you know, I like Rate Tracker's one that, man, I wish I, wish I knew it's about that. It's a no-brainer. A couple yeah, of years yeah, yeah. ago. I yeah. love that, too. I, I Yeah, I love that, you know, yeah. really, uh, you know, pointed uh, sponsors. Yeah. That, that actionable success right on them. I think that's terrific. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I think that is very, very good. So how are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm... I, uh, I've had a productive week so far. We record this on Tuesdays and That's good. Yeah, yeah, it, I, th I've had a couple of weeks where things have just been scattered. You know, I was traveling and then I had other stuff going on. I'm actually traveling at the end of this week too, but I've had a couple of really solid productive days here. I, I guess there haven't, boy, and I should be knocking on wood. Yes. There haven't been any like complete derailments of my, my focus and productivity uh, this week, which which th like those derailments aren't a terrible thing, right? They 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 generally are where opportunities lie. So yes. if I go, you know, months without getting derailed, it means either I'm not trying hard enough, I'm not doing the right thing, or my businesses are no longer interesting to people, and all of those things are bad. But a couple of days of it is all right. I'll take that. Yeah. Yeah. I like that, 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 you know, sometimes those interruptions are, are really, uh, powerful and you, it's true. Opening yourself up to that is, is a good thing. It, it kind of, you know, last week on the show, I mentioned, I want to talk about this, uh, Mark Cuban cost plus yeah. drug company, right? And, yeah. Uh, it doesn't really fit in a small business, uh, you know, environment. Cause obviously it's going to be this massive business. Mark Cuban's a billionaire and all that kind of stuff. And obviously, you know, uh, Cuban has a tremendous business brain, right? He's, if you ever watch Shark Tank, he's always thinking about opportunities. It totally makes sense. But yep. what I what I was surprised to learn about this, and, and I think this company, the concept is is terrific. It's a tremendous opportunity. If you don't know what it is, basically they're removing uh, a number of layers of middlemen that b before uh, uh, drugs and medicine gets to the pharmacy, there's a bunch of middlemen involved. A lot of them are uh, benefits, you know, things. And I don't know the exact their name, but uh, basically they're selling the prescription drug below what your copay would be with your insurance. Okay. So yep. They don't deal with insurance companies. Another reason that they keep the prices so low. Um, it's, it's a unique uh, business and I, I would, I would, Highly recommend you look at it just for the, this concept. Um, but what I was surprised to learn, speaking about interruptions, is the whole thing just got started because somebody, some random guy in the medical field, um, I believe is a physician, sent Mark Cuban an email and just said, "Hey, look, this is look at this is an opportunity." Da 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 da. And and uh, I, I'll put a link in the show notes. There's a great podcast on how I built this where Cuban talks about the reason behind it. He's not necessarily doing it to, to make a ton of money. He wants to grow this business. They have a flat 15% markup okay. uh, on all, on all the products that they sell. But it struck me how it, you know, if a guy like Mark Cuban, who I would imagine might be a little busier than I am, maybe, maybe, uh, I, you know, maybe. Like th that's a yeah. good question, maybe. but, but if, I don't know. Probably worthy of yeah. a different conversation, but sure. Yes. Let's go yes, with that. That's right. Yep. That's right. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Are, is, are, <laughs> that's a good, that's a whole other show. Yeah. Um, but 
the fact that, you know, open the email and I get these kind of emails all the time too. And most of the time I just, eh, no, that's kind of crazy here. No, thanks. But here's like, well, that's an interesting concept. Maybe I should talk to this guy. And they've built this business. They're building a big plant, uh, uh, manufacturing facility near Dallas. And, uh, you know, they're committed to, uh, helping people. And it's a great opportunity, I think, to, uh, help people at the same time you, you know, grow a company. Um, so just don't ignore those interruptions because you just never know what where they could lead. Yeah, you right. never know. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, right, yeah. right. That, I mean, that's the kind of thing is, is, you know, there's there's a lot of, there's that whole, uh, it was a, a graduation speech, a, like a college, I think, graduation speech that was delivered. And then it was turned into a song with someone, more like beat poetry, with someone reading the speech over just a chord progression underneath it and okay. a little groove. And and it's all about sunscreen. Uh, well, really, yeah. it's about everything except sunscreen. Sunscreen is in the it's, – it's just here's a bunch of advice I can give you, but I don't know what I'm talking about except at the beginning I told you to wear the sunscreen and wear that. You know, it, like it's all these things. And, and, yeah. and one of them – one of the little anecdotal things in this, in this piece, I'll call it, is – that, uh, you know, don't worry about life's interruptions. Those are the things that happen on a random Tuesday and you have no control over them. And it, it's that is great advice. Like, do not yeah. sit down and fret about, you know, when is the other shoe going to drop? Because it will. The whole point is you don't know when. And if you sit around worrying about it, you've wasted a bunch of your time. And but right. but, you know, I and as soon as I heard that in this, whatever it was, maybe I read I, I I've, I've experienced this this bit of words and I'll find a I, I know I'm talking about it in this very vague way. I will find a link to some version of this so that you can all either read it or hear it. But um, that whole idea of the, you know, the surprise that happens on a random Tuesday afternoon. Of course, we're recording this on a random Tuesday afternoon. So I, re yeah. I realize I am tempting the gods here. But, yes. you know, that that whole concept really hit me hard. It was like one of those powerful bolts of lightning the first time I heard it. And it was like, yeah, don't worry about what's going to happen on a random Tuesday afternoon because you don't know. That's the whole point. That's right. Yeah. Uh, you know, it but... Be aware that these things do happen, and some of them are really crappy and can totally screw you for years, and some of them are really amazing and can totally set you up for years, and it's just how life works. That's right. And and uh, kind of this business brain concept that we've been leaning into is to just prepare yourself. I mean, some of those things you can't prepare, so just, okay, we're going to adapt and uh, embrace the good things and mitigate the negatives, right? Yep. So it, it's, it's I, fascinating. I am, I, there's another uh, uh, mindset approach that I think is valuable that I have learned to uh, adopt and integrate into my life. And that is the approach that pilots are told to take. When you're flying your plane and something bad happens, the worst thing you can do is react immediately because yeah. when you're flying a plane, you have altitude and altitude means you have time. And the, if you, if you start changing your relationship with altitude by intention, you may be cutting into valuable time. So what they teach pilots to do is the first thing you want to do is stop and think about what you're going to do. And then once you come up with a plan, Think one more time before you start to implement. And I think that's a really powerful way to approach those random Tuesday afternoon incidents because you can, a gut reaction, sometimes, I'm sure we, we can all come up with examples where an immediate reaction saved the day and everything was great. However, most of the time, taking a moment, not overreacting, not reacting too quickly, breathe. Okay, here's the scenario. What does this actually mean? Now, let's take action. You don't want to ignore it because not taking action unintentionally is still an intentional act. But, uh, right, right, you know, but, but that whole mindset of, okay, yep, the plane's still in the air. So we haven't crashed yet. Now, let's figure out what our options are. Let's look around. 
Let's check all the instruments. Let's get all the data. Okay, now let's go. You know, I mean, there's there's the risk of like going yeah. overboard into, you know, analysis paralysis. You don't want to do that either. But take a look, breathe, then take action and go. Yeah. 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 I like it. Yeah, Makes same. a lot of sense. Yeah. That's very good. That's good. So I'm, I'm excited today to talk about, you know, we've been kind of not necessarily dooming and glooming, but we've been trying to prepare our listeners for, hey, things are slowing down. You know, chances of a recession, if we're not already in one, are really good. So here's how you cut costs. Here's how you could react, build your revenue stack. Um, but I, I want to talk about hiring uh, and creative ways to hire things that we've talked about on the show before, but also some tips for, from some outside resources that we want to sh share with you. And then next week, I want to talk about the dreaded layoff if you have to uh, go that route. And uh, But I'm excited this week to talk about hiring. I have, I have a really interesting tip to, uh, to start it off um, that I'm excited to share with you. Well, I am eager to hear your tip. I'm also eager to tell everybody about our sponsors. Can I do that first, Shannon? Absolutely. Yep. All right. First up is Rate Tracker, presented by SkySail Solutions, your trusted payments partner. Look, payment processing is confusing as it is, and so are the rates and fees associated with accepting credit cards as payment. What if there was a free solution that allowed you to easily and automatically understand your bottom line credit card processing rates and fees every month? There is. Rate Tracker is a free and simple way for you as a small business owner to know your cost to accept payments so you don't get lied to or taken advantage of by your payment processor. Too many times those payment processors have intentionally left their merchants in the dark. As a responsible business owner, Rate Tracker is your tool to level the playing field. Take back your hard earned money. Rate Tracker makes it simple for you to understand your costs, to accept payments, and provides you with free access to trusted payments experts like SkySales Solutions, which can give you free advice on how to optimize your payment acceptance program. Visit sky sale.com slash rate tracker to sign up for the only service that's dedicated to helping you know your numbers, keep track of your payment processing costs, and alert you immediately if there's ever a rate increase. sky sale.com slash rate tracker. And our thanks to Rate Tracker, presented by Sky Sales Solutions, for sponsoring this episode. You know, we love that sound here because that's the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify is a platform designed for anyone to sell anywhere, giving entrepreneurs like us the resources once reserved for big business, customized for our needs with a great-looking online store that can bring our ideas to life and tools to manage our day-to-day -day and drive sales. Making your idea real opens endless possibilities. It's a journey, but that's the beauty of entrepreneurship. And Shannon and I, we have both used Shopify for many different things over the years because they get it and they get it done. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel when Shopify's got it right there. And it's not just us. Shopify powers millions of entrepreneurs just like us from first sale to full scale. Every 28 seconds, that sound happens because a small business owner makes their first sale on Shopify. So you can get started by building and customizing your online store with no coding or design experience, plus 24-7 support. You're never alone. Go to shopify.com slash SBS, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Start selling on Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash SBS right now, shopify.com slash SBS. And our thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon, let's, so we're putting the, the laying people off thing till next week, which is great. Cause I like to, yeah. I like to, you know, procrastinate <laughs> on the terrible things, uh, yeah. which is probably going to be the first lesson not to do, but be that as it may, we have the opportunity to put that off till next week. Let's talk about hiring, which is, a whole lot more fun, I think. Yes, I agree. I, uh, absolutely. And, and you know, before we get into some some specifics, uh, I have a, a tip that I heard that I really like, and I've never used it before. So I was like, wow, this is really interesting. So, and, and the, you know, when you're trying to hire people and you want some references, well, lots of companies now really won't give you any information for fear of, you know, liability or, yeah. you know, or they can't say anything negative. They can say, Oh, I only, we, we hired a, hired them on this date, you know, da, 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 da. Um, so this person, 
they their their trick was what they would call or reach out for a reference call or email. They would say, "Please respond to me if you highly recommend this applicant as super great." That's it. Oh. So if you got that's it. Just respond if this applicant is super great. And if you highly recommend, and if you get no response, don't hire that person. Yeah. And I well, okay. Was, so there's, a, you know, I mean, I, I, I like this, but there's some yes. risk in there. Like emails get stuck in spam <laughs> emails, you, you know, yeah. so I, I, I guess yeah. there's, there's more to it, right? Like if I were going to do this, I would give it a better chance of succeeding by maybe just putting the person's name in yeah. the subject line, nothing else. Not sure. I need That's a reference, a right? Like I like it. You know, if I yeah. if you're you're coming to me, I'd put Shannon Jean as the subject line. That's it. I like it, right? Because if yeah. if if you had worked for me and I got an email from you, you know, from some rando three years from now with your name in the subject yeah. line, be like, wait, why is that name in my world again? It, you know, that kind of thing. I like it. Yeah, true. So uh, yeah, I mean, you have to kind of be careful. In, in yeah, you have to give it some nuance, some nuance, yeah. and and adjust it to fit your yeah. business or your style. But I love the concept of oh yeah, if, hey, just only get back to me if you can highly recommend this applicant as super great, and that's it. You that's know, it. And, uh, I thought it was a, a powerful thing. If if you've used something like like that before. You know, share it with us. Feedback at businessshow.co. I'd love to hear about it because it just kind of hit me. I was like, man, that's brilliant. You know, I thought yeah. that would be great. I like it. Um, I like it. Yeah, yeah so, for sure. So hiring, you know, my, my, you'd think that during a downturn, but what I I find really kind of interesting right now is there are certain sections of uh, the employment market that I believe are really going to take a hit and lots of people are going to get laid off. We're going to talk more about that in a few minutes. Yeah. But there's still... Uh, massive demand for other areas that were just short workers. And we, you know, it's, I'm sure you've experienced it trying to go anywhere, interacting with companies that are short. Hey, we're, you know, due to COVID or whatever, um, still powering through trying to get people to work. And at least everywhere around here in California, there's help one signs, you know, nonstop. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, you know, out here in California, you know, like starting, Salary for managers at the Walmarts are uh, over two hundred thousand dollars. Uh, Seriously, absolutely. For a yep. manager at Walmart is going to make two hundred k to start. Yep, I think it's like two ten or something like that to start. Yeah, and out here in and out, uh, you know, one of the greatest hamburgers you'll ever have if you you know eat uh, yeah. fast food. Yeah, uh, especially if uh, you go animal style. Yeah, eighteen fifty an hour for to start. The uh, twenty two that goes to, so I, I forget it was within six months or something like that. Twelve months, twenty two fifty an hour. Yep. Wow! So still, some you know real lack of of uh, workforce in certain areas. You know, management and even you know uh, lower level. I hate to say lower level, but uh, that's not in a derogatory manner. Just different different uh, types of employees that they're hiring out here. So. I follow this guy on Twitter. I really like his name is Nick Huber. Uh, it's, you know, at sweaty startup and we'll, we'll put a link in the, in the show notes, but I, I like it. Cause you know, he's a young guy. He's a, he does a lot with real estate, buying self storage units, not a sexy business, but it's, it can be very profitable. Absolutely. Um, and, and just doesn't hype it up very much. It's not like, you know, I'm going to make you a millionaire overnight, just hard work and looking at things in a different manner, kind of like we talk about using your business brain, right? And so he did a thread with some great uh, hiring tips that we've talked about before, but some that we haven't. And uh, I'd love to delve in. I think he's got, you know, five or six of them that I think are worth, uh, we're sharing. Here yeah, show. no, this is a great thread that, that when you shared it with me, I, I, I dove, dove right in. And the first one, I, all of these hit me really hard. And they reminded me of a lesson that I I have learned. And I, I think I'm pretty close to having fully integrated the learnings from this lesson. But it's, it, it's you know, it was maybe five to ten years ago that I learned this lesson. Probably in the five to seven year range. Probably while we've been doing this show. Because one of the benefits of doing this show is we dig into things and then, you know, obviously realize, oh, well, I'm, I'm doing this wrong in my business, so maybe I should make right. some changes. But they all kind of have this 
approach that entrepreneurs, business owners are, have a different mindset than employees and it's okay. And it's this last part that I had a real problem with. I never, I always wanted to treat people how I would want to be treated in their position. And that obviously doesn't work well because I am not in their position because I am the first to admit that I am patently unemployable. So, yeah, right. So if I, if I'm someone who is saying out loud that I am patently unemployable, how could I relate what I want to what someone who wants to be an employee wants. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with either one of these things. That's right. Right. Everybody it, has a role to play. Yeah. yeah. And it's all fine. And so the first one that uh, Nick Hubert at Sweaty Startup puts on here, it, the first mistake, I'll, I'll make sure to, to highlight that, is overcomplicating the job. And, and he says, entrepreneurs love chaos. We love making decisions and we're good at it. We thrive with uncertainty. Employees want the opposite. <laughs> it's like, oh, right. right. Yes. <laughs> yep. Clear and simple frameworks. They don't want to make hard decisions or solve complex problems all day. You know, and we've, we've talked about this on the show before, and it's definitely worth revisiting because don't make the mistake of thinking that your employees are just like you. They're oh. absolutely not. And, and so this concept of we give everybody complete, auto you know, all this autonomy and everything else, that, that's not the best way to do it, you know, and you're going to have people within your organization that some of them like to, to have more autonomy and do things on their own yes. and others need, you know, day-to-day -day guidance. Yeah. This but isn't hard and need... fast binary. Yeah. This is, but it's a right. good approach. Right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. And they still, they still need a clear framework of this is the job. These are the tasks that have to get done. You know, here's my expectation. And then, you, you know, certainly giving them independence, I, I think, is really good. There's, we're going to talk about delegating here uh -huh. uh, in a minute. So, you know, that's the other side of the coin, right? And so uh, it's just important that, like Dave said, that your employees don't think like you and you don't want them to. No, that's right? a good because, thing. It, yeah, you, yeah. I mean, you definitely don't want a bunch of clones of you running around, just like it, you don't want work. a bu bunch of clones of your employees running around. You want everybody to bring, especially in a small business— in a larger business, maybe, it, you know, the idea of cloning people sounds better. And, and I obviously am not talking about actually cloning people, but people that think the same. Yes. Right. But, you know, in a small business, if you've got, you know, somewhere between one and and 20 employees, having each person think differently about things is only going to help you. I mean, you need to be able to keep everybody on task and and focused and with the same culture, but having different people there is a good thing. And you're one of the different people that's there and you fill your role, yeah. but that's it. You're the only one that needs to fill your role unless maybe you have a business partner, but even then you want that person to be complimentary to you, not the same as you. So yeah. that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, the second one is, you know, this is kind of where I think the, the work from home crowd is going to be in for a bit of a shocker over the next year. Uh, and you know, number two is hiring. One of the mistake is hiring only in America. Uh, he's, you know, Nick says, if the job can be done remotely on a computer, it can be done just as well or better by someone in this example in the Philippines. Uh, he says 18 of their 45 employees are currently there. You know, if, if you can be replaced large, I guarantee you large companies or even small ones are thinking of ways to save money. And it's going to be easier to replace you if you're not part of like the in-person team and people don't have relationships with you. And so I think the work from home concept, while I love it and I do it and I hire people that do it as well, I think it's been overplayed a bit. And I believe we're going to get some correction. And some of those ways may come from offshore hiring like this. Yeah, I, actually, I don't see it as a correction. I see it as us embracing this idea of of remote working and working from home. And it's like, yeah, okay, wait, yeah. right? Like, wait a minute, this works. So why are we limiting ourselves to people who yes. live in one specific spot? I remember years ago, I had a conversation with your glorious state there, Shannon, the state of California, yes. when they came to me and said, hey, uh, turns out you haven't been paying franchise taxes in our lovely state and I said, you're damn right I haven't. Why would I want to be doing that? And they're like, well, you have an employee here. I'm like, 
yeah, but that doesn't matter. Like that's immaterial to the business. They're like, well, it doesn't matter. You have Nexus here, so you need to pay us the. Mi-. I said, we don't earn any money in California. They said, great. Well, you only then owe us eight hundred dollars per year. That's correct. Yeah, uh, which many states don't do, by the way. Uh, it's based on revenue, not just Nexus uh, having a flat minimum fee. But the state of California was very happy to charge me their minimum fee, and of course, many penalties because I hadn't paid it for you know the prior seven years or something like that. And I said to him. If my employee came to me tomorrow and said, hey, Dave, I've been lying to you. I live in Bolivia. I could care less. In fact, I'd I'd feel a whole lot better about it because I'd be able to tell you Californian people to screw off. But um, if you don't care where your employee lives and you're fine with them living in Bolivia or the Philippines, well, then open up your options to people that do live in Bolivia and the Philippines <laughs> because it really doesn't matter. We, in fact, we have one woman in the Philippines working for the business. I never talk about here uh, on the show. And she's been with us for that business is four years old. She has been with us for three of them and she's wonderful. She, uh, she's great. Yeah. We, and we don't care the, the weird one. The only weird part about it. And I actually haven't thought about it in years because it, she chooses to work what I'll call us hours is that she's literally on the other side of the world. So she works when it's dark out for her. And uh, and we don't mandate that. Like when we hired her, yeah. we said, you know, you work whenever you want. That's totally fine. Like, we, you know, and we can catch up. We can sync up. We're all night owls anyway. She's like, nope, I have already been doing this for a number of years. I organized my life this way. You know, I'll work whatever, nine to five based on Eastern time or something like that. And so she works when it's dark. She sleeps a little bit and then she has her daytime to herself. So, you That's know. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So it's, I, I think, yeah. you, you know, uh, you don't want to miss those opportunities. No. Uh, look at, you know, a global uh, workforce and see what makes sense uh, for your for your business. Right. Yeah. Um, the next one is, you know, and again, we've we've talked about this a lot, even just on this show, firing too slow. You know, uh, <laughs> Nick, you know, says that, oh, your, your gut, gut instinct is almost always right. In, uh, in his case, employees rarely improve. I'm not sure I agree with that 100%. They rarely get better or learn how not to make the same silly mistakes or bad decisions. Cut ties quickly. A weight will be lifted off your back. Um, I think, Dave, I could probably speak for you and say we've both made this mistake. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm a nice guy. I like to consider myself a nice guy. I hate firing people. Um, but you do have to act as quick as you can, cut your losses and move on. Um and, and you need to listen to your other people, your managers, your supervisors, because they will often be the first ones to tell you, hey, this person should go. Uh, and even though, you know, I have this concept that it when you have to fire somebody, it's a failure of management, right? You either hired the wrong person or you didn't train them correctly. But OK, that's just. The, that's statement. fine. That doesn't mean. Yes, it doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't mean, mean that you have to then fix to this person. Right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's to help you in the future. So and I've, I've been through this a few times. Yes, um, you're right that other people in your organization will tell you this, but they won't necessarily tell you as clearly as you just stated it, Shannon. They might it might come in the form of a well, you know how Tim is. So he's going to say no to this, but I think we should do it anyway, right? Like when people start qualifying how and predicting how someone else is going to reply in the negative or treat something and slow down the process or not get it done, uh, I think I think Nick is 100% right. Your gut is almost always right, and you need to rid your company of incompetence ASAP. If you get the feeling that someone is incompetent, Yes, it is your failure. You hired the wrong person. The only other failure you will continue to make is not firing them today. That's it. it. You know, there's there's no way to take someone who is incompetent. And I, I, I don't I don't like to use the term willfully incompetent, but some people really are. They're stubborn. They don't want to learn more. They don't they want to do their thing the way they know how to do it or don't know how to do it. Uh and and when you find somebody like that, get them out, get them out. And also look for people whose mindset challenges the culture you already have. Sometimes that's OK. Sometimes an evolution of your company's culture is a good thing. But be really 
intentional about keeping people who are challenging your company's culture. And I say this having seen it in others. And I also say it knowing that I've been that person in not just companies, but, you know, I'm a musician. I play in bands. I have seen myself change the culture of a band and not necessarily for the better. Sometimes for the better. Yeah. But, sure. you, you know, we all have our ways. And, and I, I have a, an, an ability to lead, right? I, you know, I, I don't want to say I'm a natural born leader, but I, I certainly have the ability to convince other people of the way that I am thinking. And that isn't always a good thing when it's somebody else's rodeo. So Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. You don't need too many good. cooks in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah. the next one is one of my favorites, Shannon, and, and that is waiting too long to delegate. I, I continue to be guilty of this. Um, Nick says that delegation is uncomfortable. And you can do any task in your business better and more efficiently yourself. If anybody else says, yeah, that's me, raise your hand and you're in good yeah. company. Yep. Uh, but. But it, it does, it, it does really hold you back, you know, oh, and, and yeah. I, I've constantly made this mistake and uh, even to, to this day, I know I do it. And I was like, well, how would I get somebody to do this? And this is a little, there's some nuance here. And how would they understand this? And it, it, you're, you're convincing yourself that you're more important than you're you really rationalizing. Are. Yeah. You're yeah, rationalizing yeah, because yeah. you don't want many things. You don't want to pay for it. That, that could be one right. of the things, but it might not be the driving factor. It's you, you're rationalizing because you don't want the to give up control over whatever that little fiefdom of your business is. Right. Yeah. All those things. Nick says one thing that really hit home. As soon as you can't spend your time selling new customers, it is time to hire. Yeah, that's right. Yep. You become the bottleneck, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're the bottleneck. Your growth. Yeah. 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 And a, a part of it for me is that I often think, oh, it'll be more complicated if I bring somebody else in. I'm trying to keep this simple. Yeah, and this for kind a couple of, thing, of weeks, it might be. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and I like, you know, we, we had... Um, Gary Von Meer from Tech Defenders on a year or so ago, and, and he had that 85% rule. As soon as he felt that someone could do the job 85% as good as he could, then he would step aside. You know, so your your percentage may vary. Maybe it's 80% or 70. I don't know. Yeah. But I thought that was an interesting way to look at it and to plan to step aside. You should be constantly, I mean, I, I always tell my employees, don't you want to work your way into another job? You'll get bored. So you should be doing the same for yourself, right? Uh, get out of the way and let these people succeed and grow your business. Yeah, that, that is a great, yeah, Gary had the right way of looking at it. He knew he, and he knows that he is going to take things that he's doing and hand them to other people. And he gives himself permission whether it's true or not is totally irrelevant. You're just playing mind games with yourself, right? He gives himself permission to hand something off to someone where his gut tells him they're not going to do it as well as me. Well, they're not going to do it the yeah. same as you, whether they that's do it okay. as well yeah. or better. Yes. yes. Like that's all almost immaterial, right? I mean, it's, it's not, but it is. You just need to get over that hump. And that's his way of doing it is telling himself if they do it 80% as well, then I can go do more. And and now yeah. I've got somebody handling that, and yeah, it's not perfect, but so what? I okay. I, I get to do more. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, number five is something I think we're also both guilty of micromanaging. Um, you know, employees want guidance, right? We we talked about that uh, uh, earlier in the show, but they don't need you to pound them with questions all day long. Um, you know, Nick says way too many bosses look over shoulders and distract their best people. Give them clear instructions and get out of the way. Uh, I, I very, very important and a powerful way to slow the growth of your business and to make people unhappy is if you're just up in their grill all the time, double checking and, you know, you got to let people do what they know how to do. Yeah. For sure. I, yeah. I, I'm actually, this is the one thing, this is probably the first one of these things that I learned because I don't like to micromanage people. It, it obviously it consumes my time. I was going to say it wastes my time. It also does that, but it certainly consumes my time. It makes me feel impatient. And so now when I hire people and, and I say now, I mean, this is probably for the last 10 years, I've told people this, look, 
I have a terrible habit of micromanaging and I hate it. So if you, if you or me, if either one of us finds me micromanaging you, we're going to say something, we're going to figure out why it's happening and we're going to solve the problem because neither one of us wants that. And, and I give them permission to call me out on it. In fact, more than permission, it is in the job description. You will tell me if you think I'm micromanaging you because that's a problem and it's probably a symptom of a different problem, but let, let's, let's acknowledge it yeah. for what it is and then let's go dig in and, and fix it so that we can both move on with our jobs. Yeah. Yeah. I, talking about it is really a good thing. And also talking about it with your other employees too. Mm -hmm. So you could say, Hey, if you see me micromanaging to a point where it's detrimental to what we're trying to get done here. Yeah, exactly. Please call me out on it. You, you know, and, and just bringing it up, uh, is, is that way? Cause I think it's a symptom as well. If you, as the business owner, if you don't think things are going the right way, well, rather than try to micromanage people and, you know, square pegs into a round hole or whatever, you have that discussion. It's like, yeah. well, hey guys, I'm feeling the need to micromanage. Let's figure out why. Um, so I don't, you know, so we can not do that. It's, it's important. Yep. No, it's, it's key. It's, it's key. Yep. 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 Uh, la uh, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Okay. okay yeah. it, it, Nick's last comment, which I, I've been down this road a couple of times. Um, it, it, and I, I have some comments on it. You'd be surprised, but, uh, is, he thinks it's a mistake to set up complicated profit sharing or equity plans, uh, retirement plans. You know, he's saying employees want a consistent paycheck. They wear, uh, you know, and they rarely want the risk of uncertainty when it comes to comp compensation. If you're doing some sort of, you know, profit sharing kind of thing. Uh, and he says, if you have to do it, share revenue and not profit. And I, I couldn't agree more. Oh, yeah. um, you know, yeah, profit sharing is a nightmare because people don't, have yeah. control over they don't. your expenses. I, they may have That's control right. over some of them. They may have control over some of your revenue, but they don't have control over all of it. So how can they, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's very complicated. And I think that it's much more effective to give out bonuses based on performance. If you want to do that, you say, Hey, uh, you could do it with individuals if you reach these benchmarks or uh, like my in my case, we used to reward bonuses when they uh, achieve different training levels, you yep. know, moving up higher as a tech. Uh, and then you can also I, I really found it helpful to do departments say, look, guys, this is these are our numbers. If we can hit this output number and uh, keep the returns and defects at this low rate. For thirty days, ninety days, whatever it is, we're all going to share in the and get, and everybody's going to get a bonus. I think it's great. Um, I think the you know four hundred one k retirement stuff is is great, but the lower level of the employee, the less important it's going to be. You're going to find those people are living probably paycheck to paycheck, at least here in California, uh, and trying to get them to participate in something, you're going to be frustrated. Um, there's better ways to do it, right? Um, y y and you could certainly still, we did it. I did it a couple different, a few different times. Is that right? Did matching, yeah. yeah, matching contributions to try to motivate them. Um, it's good for your business. There's some real big tax benefits. It's good for you personally. There's some great benefits in there. Um, but you need to get creative on how you encourage them and your employees to contribute. And that biggest part of that is like, explaining and educating them how, how you know when you match that what they put in it's it's free money right if you if you're oh, matching for them yeah yes for them um and and there's some obviously tax benefits for you because the more your employees contribute you as the owner and the higher typically hopefully earners uh you can contribute more as well um and so the, it, the system is designed to try to reward everyone, but it can be challenging. Now, in California, you may may not be surprised, but there and actually more states are doing this. So I won't sure. tear into California too much, but they've mandated that businesses that have over five people have to have a retirement plan now. What? And if you don't, absolutely, if you don't have one, there's a state plan called Cal Savers. Okay, it doesn't cost it doesn't cost employers anything, which I. I I definitely respect other than there is some management involved in your payroll uh, 
to allocate those funds that the employee decides they want to contribute. Um, so, sure. and the an employee can opt out and there's some tricks they do, which I thought they can start with as little as 1%, but over, over the subsequent years, it automatically increases up to 8% unless they opt out because most people don't even notice it. Right. The right. Small amounts. Um, the other thing I do like about this plan, this Cal savers, especially for entry level employees, let's call them, is it's portable. You can take it with you wherever you go to work. Oh, right. So if right. You, yeah, uh -huh. it, it's yours. The employee doesn't isn't involved at all other than, again, managing the deduction for, with their payroll company. Um, so it's not a bad thing. What I first my my total anti you know, central control bias was like, <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. But the more I read into it in preparing for the show, I was like, well, you know what? Maybe that's not a bad thing because the, you know, people are going to have to, uh, uh, you know, we're going to have to support people when they stop working anyway, right? Oh, that's so true. Give yeah, me, fair. Yeah. It's just, it's no way around it. You know, as a society that's, that's relatively affluent, um, you got to have safety nets. And this yep. is a way for people to contribute on their own. Um, they can choose their own investment things. And this is what I always found especially sticky in this retirement thing is your business kind of gets involved in like, how's the, my investments are doing and, and how does it work and how can I contribute? And so you have like people come into your office to describe all this kind of stuff, you know, and there's fees involved. So this might be a good solution for your employees. I, I just don't know how it impacts you as an employer if you want to try to do another plan or something for yourself, um, I'm sure there's some rules engaged in that. So. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yes, of course. Know. No, I yeah. actually, I kind of like that now that you've described at first when you said it, I was, I had the same yeah, initial reaction as you <laughs> like, what do you mean? You, you can't tell me what to do. I mean, obviously yes. they can, they made me pay the 800 bucks times whatever, seven yes. plus penalties. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it that's not a terrible thing, and especially not. if it doesn't cost the employers, like it, it creates right. this scenario that's super easy, and and potentially and very likely benefits employees. I actually kind of like it, huh? Well, that from that perspective, I think it's great. I just don't know the ramifications for us as business owners how it limits what we can do. Yeah, of so course. So there, there's probably benefit to doing a plan yourself that allows you to save more and you to invest more, but you'd have to research it. Yeah. If you're using this Cal Savers program or you're in another state that has a mandate, I think there's a, a handful of them now. Yeah. Let us know. Feedback at businessshow.co. Um, that's all I have for hiring. Thanks to Nick Huber, uh, you know, it, the sweaty startup, you know, he's a great follow on Twitter. Get some good tips out of there. I think he's got a podcast as well. We'll oh, link in the show notes. Huh. Um, so next week, let's talk about the unpleasant part of layoffs. And if you have to do it, and, and again, it's this interesting time where it's almost like you're shifting uh, assets around in, in, because you may be laying off some people, but you still have to be hiring for other departments. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about what the best way to handle it, considering your requirements of your business. And also, you know, you got to treat people with empathy and, and help them transition to something successful too. So absolutely. That's yeah, yeah. what we're going to talk about next time. Sweet. Hey, uh, you know, we would love to have you review the show, folks, because your reviews give us a sense of what you're looking for out of the show. We're talking about small businessing. We're talking about using our business brains. Is this what you want to listen to? Right. Please let us know. Businessshow.co slash reviews. You can also just go to businessshow.co in the show notes. We'll have a link where you can review the show as well. We'd love to hear what you think. And if you don't want to do a public review, that's fine. But please do email us, feedback at businessshow.co, because we want to hear from you. That's how we know if what we're doing works for you or if you have ideas or you're like, wait, you did this one thing once and I really like that. And then you haven't done it since. Why? Ask us that question. We're here. We want to know. It's good stuff. You got anything else, Shannon, or is it time to go? That's it, man. That's back. all, uh, you know, again, yeah, share your hiring stories with us, and we'd love to hear it. Yeah, back to small businessing. Make sure you check out Shopify.com slash SBS and Sky-Sale.com slash Rate Tracker. And uh, do me a favor, would you folks? Keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next week. <laughs>